Hello everyone, we're here at the Illinois Fire Service Institute and behind me you see one of their burn facilities here at the Institute. What we're doing is we're doing a continuation or covering a continuation of research that started back in July of 2015. If you recall, the Illinois Fire Service Institute with a, a multitude of partners was conducting research on interior fire attack and alternative tactics. And what they specifically were researching was the chemical exposure and the cardio cardiovascular effects of interior firefighting and the various tactics that we deploy on a regular basis. So when you look at it, what they're doing is evaluating the chemical exposures, what we expose ourselves to when we're actually fighting a fire, and how that affects us in the cardiovascular arena as well, because we know cardiovascular incidents are at the highest in regards to line of duty deaths. Today and a couple of uh, days throughout this week, they're going to continue this research, but they're taking it to the training environment. Now they're looking at the fuels that we burn. Uh, whether it's the OSB, whether it's straw, whether it's pallets, or even the, the simple theatrical smoke. They're evaluating that. What are we exposing ourselves to as instructors, as well as firefighters, when we're doing training? So this is a holistic approach about firefighters, the cardiovascular strains that we put on ourselves as firefighters and during the training environment, and then also the chemical exposure that takes place throughout the duration of our career, whether it be training or the actual firefighting event. The evolution starts behind me with our simulated firehouse. We have four students as well as three instructors that are going to board on the engine with staffing of four, the ladder truck with staffing of three. They're going to respond around campus and pull up right here where they'll deploy off of and begin their operation. Once the fire apparatus arrives on the scene, in order to keep repeatability here, we have a static engine which will be turned on, ready to go, and the crew has their choice of two pre-connects that are packed two different ways. They're both 200 feet of hose with a half inch tip. They will grab that line, deploy that line as their crew normally would, and prepare to make entry into the structure. When the truck arrives on the scene, their first responsibility is to gain access for the engine. Uh, you see here we have a forcible entry prop. This forcible entry prop is heavily fortified with two two by twos. So it's very difficult to make it through this prop. The purpose of that is to make sure that every crew that comes through this evolution gets the same amount of work. So as they're working on getting through this door, the engine company's stretching their line. Once the line is stretched, bled out, masked up, ready to go, we allow the truck to move on from the prop, go ahead, mask up, move in with the engine and begin their search. Once the two crews make entry, they've got two main tasks they need to accomplish. They need to put water on two rooms on fire, and they need to rescue two uh, simulated occupants that will be in the structure. Uh, they will be in the same location for each experiment as the crew chooses to either do a right-hand search, left-hand search, whatever tactic they choose to deploy. Uh, it's up to them. We are benchmarking when both occupants are removed from the structure. In this particular evolution, we're working in a concrete training building with two fuel packages. The fuel packages both look like this, made up of three pallets on a rack, positioned with uh, straw spread throughout the package. The instructors that are operating in here, they will ignite this to get optimal conditions for the students making entry to put water on this and the second room on fire while the search is taking place. Our main role here is to capture what's going on in the environment that the firefighters are operating in. So we're taking a number of measurements. We've got temperature measurements with thermocouples in every room located at one foot, assuming someone could be laying on the floor, three foot, about the head crawling level, five foot, the walking head level, and seven foot gives us close to a ceiling temperature so we can see what's going on above the firefighters. We also have video and thermal imaging in several locations within the structure so we can track those firefighters, see how they're performing their tasks and how much work they're doing. We also have heat flux in multiple locations, looking at how much energy is coming down from the upper gas layer onto the firefighters because that additive effect of temperature and heat flux is very important. We also have a number of portable sensors where we've got uh, GoPros on just about every firefighter's head and instructor's head so we can see what they're doing as well as a uh, instrumented helmet that allows us to tell the heat flux, the temperature at that head level of that firefighter as they move throughout the structure and that's recorded and sent back to our instrumentation trailer. 